Galatians chapter 6, verses 7 through 9. Do not be deceived. This is a verse we covered last week. I'm going to break it down a little further today. Do not be deceived. Be deceived. God is not mocked. For whatever a man sows, that he will also reap. For he sows to his flesh, for he who sows to his flesh will of the flesh reap corruption. But he who sows to the spirit will of the spirit reap everlasting life. Verse 9. And let us not grow weary while doing good. For in due season we shall reap if we do not lose heart. Very interestingly here, it says that the doing good is in the part of the sowing in the right way. It tells us don't grow weary while doing good. We can replace that because of the context with the following. Don't grow weary while sowing to the Spirit. Don't, be, don't grow weary while sowing good things. Because in due time, we shall reap the good things we've sown. We shall reap the spiritual things we've sown if we do not leave, lose heart. I, I want to focus some time in, in the first part of today's message on the don't grow weary. Because in the meantime and in between time, it is a what time of patience. The word weary here used in, in, in the scripture means to be utterly exhausted or spiritless. Have you ever been in a place where you're like, I just can't do this. Like I've got, there's no, no encouragement about me. And the Spanish would say, animo, there, I got no more animo. This is done. Like I got no more. I'm out. I'm checked out. I'm clocked out. I'm not putting any more effort into this. Have you ever been in that position in any area of your life? Come on. If you're, if you're over the age of five, you've been in that position, okay? Um, that's weariness. The scary part about the definition of weariness and the way um, the scriptures use it in this context is that he tells us don't be weary, but he tells us don't grow weary. And depending on the version of the verse that you are reading, it says don't be weary or it says don't become weary. That's scary to me because what that tells me is that in, in order for us to be weary, there had to be a process to get us there. Stay with me for a second. Because when you first started planting the thing that you wanted to do, you were excited. That's why you planted. You were ready to go. You were ready to do this. I'll give you the context that I gave you last week. You were praying for a husband. You were praying for a wife. You got married and you were like, let's do this thing. And then you get married and there's a meantime and in between time while you're figuring out this marriage. And all of a sudden you become something that you were not when you started the thing that you started. You grew up into something that you weren't supposed to grow up into. You grew up into a place of weariness where you became exhausted and spiritless and now your family and your spouse is wondering why you're checked out. Because you became something you weren't supposed to be. And if you become something you're not supposed to be, you will not get the thing you were supposed to get because the word of God says, do not grow weary because if you don't grow weary, then you will reap the harvest so long as you don't lose heart. A prerequisite, a requirement for you to get the harvest that we're going to talk about next week is that you do not grow weary, that you do not lose heart. And the scary part about that is that is something we become if you're not careful. If you are not intentional about staying connected and being patient in the season of the time between you're going to enter into the danger zone. How many of you guys have seen the movie Top Gun? Highway to the... Come on. There's only like three faithful. All y'all who raised your hand and did not join me, I'm saying you, do not, you are not a faithful. You are not a faithful Top Gunner. That's all I got to say. Because you guys know this. There is a highway to the danger zone. And you know what it is? That highway is that meantime and in between time. That's the highway to the danger zone if you are not careful. 
Do you understand? Because you will become something you were not intended to be. You will become weary if you do not understand what you're doing in that season. You have to be aware of the danger zone. Be aware of the time in between. Why? Because when you're waiting on the seed that you planted in expectation and in excitement, that season becomes difficult. Why does it become difficult? Because when you plant the seed, what happens with the seed that you planted? You no longer see it. It's buried. It's in a dark place. And you just got to wait and you just got to trust that it's going to happen the way it was supposed to happen. It's not seen. And here's the, here's the other thing about this. You know, there are things that we plant uh, when things are going well. But then many times, many times when we are planting seasons of expectation today of something I want to get done today, many times those seeds are planted in a dark space, in a dark place. They're not planted in a time where everything's hunky-dory. They're planted in a time where things don't look right. You understand? Like, like when, you, when you start a business, for example, for my business folk in a house, oftentimes when you plant a seed, it's not because you were already a millionaire. You planted it because you broke and you're trying to become a millionaire. Yes or no? Right? You, you, you planted it because you were no longer happy about your financial situation or the work environment that you are. You got the idea and you got the concept. You have a better product that you think you can bring to market and you get excited about it and you plant it. But when you plant it, many times it is isn't one of the darkest seasons of your life. Are you hearing me? You have the idea and you have the seed that you want to restore the relationship with your loved ones. Why do you have to restore the relationship with your loved ones? Why did you get that idea? Why did you get that seed? You got it because it's not good. The relationship is not good. It's in a dark place. So you're excited. You get the hope. You get the inspiration from God that it can be better. You plant the seed. But what happens? It is in the darkest moment of your life that you planted that seed. So it's a challenging time. Are you hearing me? That's why weariness shows up. Because oftentimes we plant the seeds in the darkest moments of our lives. My marriage is falling apart and I need to drop seeds to get it back together. It's the darkest moment of my life. Are you hearing me? I, I've, I've got to do something and, and, and it's tough and, and we grow weary. You cannot grow weary. You cannot lose heart. Because the promise is certain. He says, he said it, we shall reap. Not we might reap. It's possible you're going to reap. You know, if the market goes up, you'll reap. No, no, no. You shall reap. Do you hear what I'm saying? Don't grow weary. Don't lose heart. You shall reap. Here's the problem with weariness is that once weariness shows up, his cousins come along too. You ever just want to hang out with one person, you get the whole child, say, man, I didn't invite all y'all, but I got to do it. You know what I'm saying? Like, kind of like the wrestling team, right? I got one, but I guess I got to take them all. A couple of them that I'll, I'll enjoy, okay? But you know what I'm saying? Right? What weariness comes to his cousins. What are his cousins, right? Comes to cousin frustration, hopelessness, cousin anger, hurt, pain disillusionment one of the worst ones desperation because when you get desperate you start doing things you shouldn't be doing and like I kind of mentioned last week we start planting the wrong kinds of seeds do not be deceived whatever a man sows that that he shall reap God is God cannot be mocked so whether you're sowing good seeds or bad seeds that's the problem you, you sowed a good seed and then because of your desperation because you allowed weariness to come in now you sow a bad seed so you're going to get that harvest whether it's good or bad do you hear what I'm saying and oftentimes that bad seed might have just be because you couldn't shut your mouth up are you hearing me like you spoke positive, you were like, yeah, we're going to do this. And then the second something goes bad, I told you you wasn't going to get it. We got to be careful of weariness. We got to be careful of the cousins of weariness. We got to be careful of the danger zone, that time in between. During that time of patience, we need to, and write this down if you're taking notes, you need to be actively participation, or participating, excuse me, you need to be actively participating in the protection of that seed. That time of patience is not just sit around and wait. That time of patience is protect the seed that was planted. 
I spoke about it last week. One of the ways you, you speak over the seed, you speak to the situation, and then you do into the situation. Listen to next, last week's teaching, okay? But you have to, write this phrase down, you have to fiercely defend the seed that was planted. Fiercely defend the seed, okay? If you were a farmer and, and you had seed planted and your entire livelihood depended on the harvest that was going to come, you would not let anything come after that seed. Am I right or am I wrong? You just wouldn't. You wouldn't. Because if you were in biblical times, in agricultural uh, societies, if you lose the harvest, your family dies of starvation. Do you understand the impact? So when God's giving you a seed that you've planted, you've got to fiercely defend that seed because that harvest is not only for your benefit, but for the benefit of those around you. Fiercely defend it. What do we have to defend it of? Think about it with me in agricultural terms. You've got to defend it from the scavengers. Those little animals, those little critters that want to come in, dig up the seed, eat the seed before it produces the harvest. That's those people in your life that have no business hanging around your seeds. You've got to defend it from the scavengers. You've, you guys have probably heard it on social media. This is, not, this is not a social media. That's not some creativity from somebody on social media. This is a God thing. You need to understand you've got to protect it from those people trying to steal something from you. Is that not the devil's goal from the get-go, to steal, kill, and destroy? 